Hello, my name's Waj, and today I'd like to go over minimal change disease. So this is a condition that affects the glomeruli found in kidneys, and it causes something called nephrotic syndrome. So nephrotic syndrome is a collection of symptoms, and it has this triad of proteinuria, hypoalbuminemia, and edema. So if we go back to this diagram that you can see in the bottom left corner, you can see the glomerulus in the Bowman's capsule. Now normally the glomerulus allows the passage of small ions and water, but when it gets damaged it becomes more permeable and protein can often leak through and then pass into the urine. Now albumin is a protein in the blood and when it starts leaving the blood you get hypoalbuminemia. So that's how you get the proteinuria and the hypoalbuminemia. Now with less protein in the blood, you have a fall in the oncotic pressure, so water moves out of the blood vessels and into the tissues causing edema. Makes sense. Now the way that I like to remember nephrotic syndrome is using this thing that I call the rule of O. So I try and remember hypoalbuminemia, proteinuria and oedema. Now, in this condition, you can often get hyperlipidemia. And to try and remember that, I think of uh, someone who's quite fat and think they're quite obese. So minimal change disease. Now, this is like the most common nephrotic syndrome found in children. And predominantly affects the children aged between four and eight. But other children of different ages can get this condition as well. Like I said, with nephrotic syndrome, you do get edema and the types of edema that you can get in this condition are known as anasarca, which is a total body edema. You can also get periorbital edema and edema in your feet. And as you can see in this picture, you can see this uh, poor child's got quite severe edema in her face, around her eyes especially, periorbital edema. Now, if you do some bloods, you'll find that there's also low albumin. And when you do a urine dip, you'll find proteinuria. What's important to know is that the way to diagnose is definitively is a biopsy. So here's a little diagram I made of a nephron. Now, you can see that there's three layers. There's an endothelial capillary layer. There's a basement membrane layer and then there's the podocytes and these are the three three layers that help to help to filter out and let selective things pass through now in this condition what we know is that there are some t-cells that arrive and they release certain cytokines that predominantly destroy the podocytes and cause effacement the podocytes are also negatively charged and this can affect their charge so certain proteins can then pass through but regardless, bigger molecules like immunoglobulins can't pass through. That's important to know. So what causes this condition? Well, we're not really too sure, to be honest. What we do know is that there is some congenital link, especially with certain infections. There may be some genetic component to it as well. And it can also be acquired. And we know that certain proteins currently in the blood can trigger certain cascades leading to this disease. There are some important complications that we do need to know about. Firstly, thrombosis. Um, in this condition, we get increased clotting factors like factor 7, factor 8 and factor 10. And that can lead to thrombotic events. So we need to be careful about that. Also, infections, predominantly streptococcus infections. They can also get spontaneous peritonitis. And also that this is a recurrent disease. So how do we treat it? Well, we can use corticosteroids normally. They work quite well. 90% um, of patients respond immediately and a third have no further relapses as well. Sometimes we need to give antibiotic prophylaxis, like I mentioned, streptococcus infections. So we normally give a penicillin type antibiotic. If that doesn't work, then second line, we can give some cytotoxic agents like cyclophosphamide. Now, the way that I try and remember this condition is that podocytes, they're kind of at the bottom 
of those three layers. I think minimal change disease and make that link together. And also I remember that children are quite small, so minim I try and remember it through minimal, the word minimal. Uh, lastly, here's a little question. A 20 year old male with a history of nephrotic syndrome is seen in clinic after a renal biopsy. He presented a week ago with anasarca, which is total body edema, and foamy urine without hematuria. His blood pressure is 100 over 60. Examination reveals periorbital edema with clear lungs and normal cardiac examination and 4 plus edema and anasarca. His 24 hour urine contains 8 grams of protein and his serum creatinine is 0.8. His urine analysis shows 4 plus protein but no red cells or cars. His renal biopsy is read as minimal change disease which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management. So let's just break this question down. We can see it's a 20 year old male, so quite a young man with nephrotic syndrome. He's got edema, he's got foamy urine. We find out later in the question that it's proteinuria. Um, and he's got a biopsy, like I said, that's a definitive investigation. That says minimal change disease. And like I said earlier, we know what the treatment is. We need to give them corticosteroids. So the answer is B, oral prednisone so uh, that's the end of this um, lecture whatever you want to call it um, thank you very much for listening give me some advice on how I can, how I can improve and I'll be happy to create some more of these tutorials or lectures or whatever you want to call them thank you very much bye